Good morning. We will continue with uh, the remains of the day by Kazuo Ishiguro. Um, we stopped when uh, uh, Mr. Stevens is uh, reminiscing about his days uh, at Darlington Hall and uh, the little acts of cruelties that uh, uh, Mr. Uh, or, or rather the uh, um, uh, rather Lord Darlington had uh, been indulging in towards uh, uh, him and also um, the uh, the wrong decisions he had taken which had a major repercussions on the international foreign policy. Uh, apart from this, we will also look at uh, how Stevens has a tendency to objectify himself. Okay, as uh, we begin the lecture, I would also like to repeat the key words as I generally uh, do uh, for every lecture. So, we are again going to look at uh, the construct of memory, nostalgia and forgetfulness in the remains of the day. We will uh, look at the Jewish situation in Britain during uh, the uh, during the second world war and uh, a few years before that preceding the second world war and prejudices against the Jewish people. We will uh, also look at uh, how Englishness is defined and how uh, um, uh, Mr. Stevens comes across as a person who has uh, uh, you know uh, perhaps unconsciously or at sub some kind of a subconscious level objectified himself um, and uh, uh, you know while identifying uh, himself deeply with the house as well um, with his profession. So, how he has become more of an object and less of a person and how this had created a deep divide, led to a deep divide um, in him, okay, in his personality. Okay. And uh, uh, also there is one interesting factor and I am just referring to um, uh, the theoretician, post colonial theorist Homi Bhabha, where uh, one feels that how people uh, where uh, Bhava suggests how people uh, um, uh, stereotype themselves. Okay. And in, in, the, in the same vein, you can feel that uh, Steve, how Stephen stereotypes himself and his nation. He signifies England uh, by its big houses and uh, their butlers uh, in an attempt to stabilize a social narrative that defines the narrative of his life. So, this is rather interesting and that also we are going to see as we start the text today. And of course, the uh, very notion of uh, Stevens as an unreliable narrator. We are uh, in chapter uh, Moscom, title Moscom near Tavistock, Devon and it is day 3 evening. Now, the suggestion that is made is uh, 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 Lord Darlington was anti-Semitic in his tendencies. He, ha he harbored certain deep rooted uh, prejudices against Jewish people and Stevens as we have uh, uh, underst as we understand him, he is deeply uh, loyal uh, and his uh, um, harbors absolutely unwavering sense of loyalty. Uh, towards uh, Lord Darlington. So, um, uh, it has often been suggested that uh, Lord Darlington was not after all such a great man and um, uh, Stevens denies, he says that it was not like that at all because he has been after all in his service for such a long period and uh, he would know, but then he concedes there were minor incidents and what were those minor incidents? We are on page 146. Um, I recall overhearing at dinner one evening when a particular newspaper had been mentioned, uh, his lordship remi uh, remarking, oh you mean the Jewish propaganda sheet. And then on another occasion around that time, I remember his instructing me to cease giving donations to a particular local charity, which regularly came to the door on the grounds that the management committee was more or less homogeneously Jewish. Uh, I have remembered these remarks because they truly surprised me at the time. So, um, it was not as if uh, Lord Darlington was utterly innocent 
yes, there were some deep rooted prejudices and this comes across more as strongly when he uh, dismisses two girls who are in the service of uh, 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 at uh, Darlington Hall. Their names are Sarah and Ruth and uh, uh, Stevens also recalls how indignant Miss Canton was at this unfair dismissal or discharge of these two young women, all because they were uh, um, Jewish maids and uh, as Stevens look, looks back, he, under, he tries to comprehend the true nature of da Lord Darlington, which was after all not entirely uh, blemishless. Page 154, now that I have recalled this episode of the dismissing of the Jewish employees, I am reminded of what could I suppose be called a curious corollary to that whole affair, namely the arrival of the household called Lisa, that is to say we were obliged to find replacements for the two dismissed Jewish maids and um, this Lisa turned out to be one of them. So, uh, what he is suggesting is that two very uh, decent girls, two honest hard working girls, they were unfairly unceremoniously dismissed just because of their race and what they got instead was a, a, a very flighty kind of a maid called Lisa and <coughs> there are uh, 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 with whom uh, nobody was extremely pleased with uh, the kind of services she rendered at the household. From here we will go on move on to page 164. The fact is I have tended increasingly of late to indulge myself in such recollections and ever since the prospect of seeing Miss Kenton again first arose some weeks ago, I suppose I have tended to spend much time pondering just why it was our relationship underwent such a change. For change it certainly did around 1935 or 1936, after many years in which we had steadily achieved a fine professional understanding. And uh, while he re regrets the loss of uh, Lord Darlington, what he is uh, unable to admit to himself was how deeply he cared about uh, Miss Kenton. Miss Canton too had a strong feelings for Mr. Stevens, but um, Mr. Stevens who had become such a master in repressing his emotions that uh, uh, it was practically next to impossible to get any kind of an emotional response out of him. I would also like to quote here uh, Milen Kundera, uh, uh, the Zach writer. Uh, in, a, in his book Ignorance, he defines nostalgia as the suffering caused by an unappeased yearning to return and this is what we find um, repeatedly in Mr. Stevens' character, you know. Uh, he suffers, he, want, he longs for the days gone by, he specially longs for the return of Miss Kenton um, and let us see uh, whether he succeeds or not. Uh, so, uh, he particularly recalls what, uh, what exactly led to uh, uh, this uh, rupture in, uh, in, the, uh, in, the rela in their relationship, uh, relationship between Stevens and uh, Miss Kenton, what actually happened. And he says um, that uh, they, had so, they had gradually started enjoying uh, each other's company and um, after the day's works, they would, uh, they would make it a point to sit together and have a cup of cocoa and uh, discuss the next day's uh, assignments or plan the week's schedule uh, and things like that. But what uh, uh, led to the end of these meetings and uh, Stevens tells us what really exactly happened and he says that one day he was enjoying a romantic novel in his room and uh, Miss Kenton just barges in and uh, insists on knowing uh, what exactly he is reading and Mr. Stevens is quite uh, uh, shy about this and he does not want to really uh, tell Miss Kenton what he is reading. Um, Miss Kenton being what she is, uh, she insists and uh, 
she would not go unless Stevens tells her what exactly he is reading and when she sees it is just a sentimental love story. And this is what he says about it. I rarely had the time or the desire to read any of these romances cover to cover, but so far as I could tell their plots were invariably absurd, indeed sentimental. So, look um, it is uh, you know love and romance perhaps sentimental and uh, may be uh, not to the taste of Mr. Stevens, but uh, uh, these novels also serve a purpose, they, uh, uh, they, de they represent or they portray um, the lives of lovers, okay. but uh, Mr. Stevens is actually ashamed to be caught reading a, uh, a romantic novel. And this also tells us a lot about his character, he is a man who was so utterly devoted to uh, his professional development that uh, things like a s cultivating a sense of humor or um, accepting one's uh, love for someone, they were totally beyond uh, his consideration. He would not even think of indulging anything, which he feels is below dignity. Uh, remember from the uh, word go, he has been fixated with the idea of what is dignity. So, banter, love, all these things which actually complete a human being, those, those were, uh, they are the these emotions are something which are totally unfamiliar to Mr. Stevens. Uh, uh, having said that, however, I do not mind confessing today and I see nothing to be ashamed in this that I did at times gain a sort of incidental enjoyment from these stories. He refuses to accept that he actually enjoyed reading love stories. Uh, the expression he uses is in incidental. Uh, enjoyment from these stories. It is like you know, I, 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 re, I read them, but I am detached from them. At the same time, having you know, he displays a sort of condescending attitude towards romance. I did not perhaps acknowledge, acknowledge this to myself at the time, but as I say, what shame is there in it? Why should one not enjoy in a light hearted sort of way stories of ladies and gentlemen? who fall in love and express their feelings for each other, but this is what he feels now and not at the time, okay, where he actually felt ashamed to be, um, to have been caught reading these novels, this such kind of a work. The fact and, and what happens, what actually leads to this disconnect between Miss Canton and Stevens is the fact that she caught him reading something so, uh, something that romantic and um, a love story, a sentimental love story. The fact that she could have be, uh, she could behave as she had done that evening was rather alarming. And after I had seen her out of my pantry and had had a chance to gather my think uh, my thoughts a little, I recall resolving to set about re-establishing our professional relationship on a more proper basis. And this at this point, he tells her that he wouldn't like to meet her except during the uh, working hours um, and uh, uh, unilaterally decides to end those very pleasant evening sessions, where he would meet and dis, uh, discuss the week's schedule with uh, Miss Canton. And um, both of them actually looked forward to these meetings, but now that he feels that he has been caught uh, uh, by Miss Canton. Uh, 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 reading a sentimental novel, and he feels that you know he has been exposed, and he he is a kind he is a kind of man who doesn't want his feelings to be exposed to anyone. He doesn't want to re reveal himself to anyone at all. And uh, Miss Kenton's act, uh, something he, uh, you know, he feels that uh, she has uh, she has acted in a very over familiar way, and uh, has overstepped her boundaries and he needed, he felt it important that uh, uh, this uh, kind of behavior should end, because it is not professional and it is not dignified. And the, there hence after the meetings end and uh, Stevens and Miss Canton go back to being mere professionals. 
one page 179 but what is the sense in forever speculating why it might have happened had such and such a moment turned out differently so look again we are talking about this sense of nostalgia where he's, he he's suffering he he knows what he has lost he yearns to get her back one could presumably drive oneself to destruction in this way from here um, we'll move on uh, to his uh, uh, his time where he you know he's in this place called moscom at devon and uh, he is uh, uh, with a couple of country folk uh, he's at he's resting with people with you know a couple that runs uh, an inn and uh, um, they are so proud to have him because uh, because of his fine manners and fine appearance and he is also driving um, Mr. Faraday's Ford uh, uh, and uh, that is a that you know, you never you do not come across a, a, a car that posh in that part of the country and um, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Taylor are quite impressed with the Stevens and they want the uh, other people of the village to come and uh, make an acquaintance with him. So, uh, he um, um, uh, Mr. Stevens meets a number of people and uh, uh, there is a person called Harry Smith who has quite strong political convictions and then uh, there in that uh, company they start uh, discussing uh, uh, the notion of dignity and uh, uh, while for Stevens the notion the definition of dignity is very conventional it belongs to the realm of ladies and gentlemen, but Harry Smith who is uh, uh, a very militant kind of a democrat, he begs to differ and he says, dignity is not just something for gentlemen. That is what we fought Hitler for. If Hitler had had his things his way, we would just be slaves now. The whole world would be a few masters and millions upon millions of slaves. And I do not need to remind anyone here, there is no dignity to be had in being a slave. That is what we fought for and that is what we won. We won the right to be free citizens and it is one of the privileges of being born English that no matter who you are, no matter if you are rich or poor, you are born free and you are born so that you can express your opinions freely and vote in your member of parliament or vote him out. That is what dignity is really about. And now, uh, this very unorthodox notion of dignity is uh, completely antithesis of what Stevens believes, because um, Stevens has actually reduced himself to the single identity category of butler. He is nothing more or he thinks of himself as nothing more than an English butler and this entire uh, sermon about what exactly Englishness is. Englishness also means uh, dignity for the poor, dignity for the common people, dignity um, uh, freedom for the people to express themselves, to express their opinions, to cast a vote, those things also constitute dignity according to uh, uh, you know free thinkers uh, like uh, uh, Harry Smith and that also suggests uh, the dawn of a new era and Mr. Stevens feels that af after all he is quite out of tune with the present times. He has reduced himself to the single identity category of butler and uh, all he has to do is only to keep the house clean and in proper order uh, to make sense of everything. His own opinions and his own ideas or his own emotions uh, do not account for much. And um, uh, uh, page 193, as it happens, there is an instance that comes to mind, which I believe illustrates rather well the real limits of whatever truth may be contained in Mr. Harry Smith's views. It is, as, as it happens, an instance from my own experience, an episode, episode that took place before the war around 1935. Now, Harry Smith's political views. Uh, trigger of old memories. 
And um, this is something that uh, Stevens had suppressed for a very long time, because it, it also, uh, there is also a sense of, you, you know, deep humiliation that he had to suffer at the hands of uh, Lord Darlington and his associates. So, what actually happened? Uh, we are told that uh, there is one Mr. Spencer, who invite, who uh, while uh, Stevens is going about his business is in uh, Darlington Hall, he asks, uh, he is asked by one Mr. Spencer to stay back in the presence of Lord Darlington and others. And he says, um, he asks him, and this uh, observe the line of question. My good man, I have a question for you. We need your help on a certain matter we have been debating. Tell me, do you suppose the debt situation regarding America is a significant factor in the present low levels of trade? Or do you suppose this is a red herring and that the abandonment of the gold standard is at the root of the matter? And Stevens is completely taken aback by this question. Uh, you see, he he knows nothing about uh, uh, international finance or politics or um, economy okay and what has and he has never concerned himself with any of these matters the only concern he had uh, uh, entertained throughout his life was how to excel himself in his profession as a butler and the, his profession had defined him throughout he knows nothing about these matters and then, um, Mr. Spencer further questions him, would you say that the currency problem in Europe would be made better or worse, if there were to be an arms agreement between the French and the Bolsheviks? I have one more question to put to our good man there. I, I very much wanted to help his help on the question presently vexing many of us, and which we all realize is crucial to how we should shape our foreign policy. What was uh, um, uh, Miss, uh, Mr. Laval really intending by his recent speech on the situation in North Africa? And to all these uh, pointed questions, uh, everyone knows there, uh, that uh, Stevens had, uh, does not have the foggiest notion about what Mr. Spencer is uh, talking about. And to every question, he has the same standard answer. I am sorry, sir, but I am unable to assist in this matter. You see, gentlemen, Mr. Spencer said, turning to the others, a man here is unable to assist us in these matters. This brought free, fresh laughter, now barely suppressed. And what is the purpose of asking someone like uh, Stevens? all these questions. Mr. Spencer went on, we still persist with the notion that this nation's decisions be left in the hands of our good man here and to the few millions others like him. Is it any wonder, saddled as we are with our present parliamentary system, that we are unable to find any solution to our many difficulties? Why, you may as well ask a committee of the mother's union to organize a war campaign. So, you see such people do not matter, their opinions do not matter, what do they know. And uh, uh, now, uh, Stevens as he sits uh, at uh, 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 in this company and listening to Harry Smith's very unorthodox political views and now he feels the, di the deep chasm that it, that, uh, that exists between the world outside and uh, um, uh, his own situation. He had been treated just like an object, a dumb inanimate object, whose only uh, worth was uh, how useful he could make to Lord Darlington and his uh, affairs. And then, uh, next comes the more interesting part, where Lord Darlington comes. Um, where he comes and says that, see, look at Stevens, we were just trying to prove a particular point. Democracy in this country would not work. 
and that was uh, uh, the purpose behind uh, Mr. St Spencer's questions, because he wanted to prove a point that um, the common folk in this country cannot be trusted, they just do not have the brains and the uh, you know intellect to run the business of the country and therefore, their opinion does not matter and the, we do not need democracy in this country. Uh, sooner or later, we will need to face up to the facts. Democracy is something for a bygone era. The world's far too complicated a place now for universal suffrage and such like, for endless members of parliament debating things to a standstill. All fine a few years ago perhaps, but in today's world, uh, absolutely it does not work. Look at Germany and Italy's Stevens, see what a strong leadership can do if it is allowed to act. None of this universal suffrage nonsense there. So, what we need is firm authority and if you remember at the beginning of this class, we have been talking about what happens to a society when uh, the citizens harbor a strong and unwavering sense of loyalty, unquestioning attitude towards the leaders and this is what happens. So, uh, the remains of the day uh, becomes a parable of sorts okay, to what happens when people conform too much. So, trust and faith in a strong leadership or authority um, as uh, history has taught us has given rise to Nazism and fascism in Germany and Italy and Lord Darlington who uh, Stevens throughout the novel has been so staunchly defending. Now, it is revealed to us that he too uh, is no different in not much different from the likes of Hitler and other dictators because of his uh, uh, total and complete support and sympathy for them. If your house is on fire, you do not call the household into the drawing room and debate the various options for escape for an hour, do you? It may have been all very well once, but the world is a complicated place now. It occurs to me in recalling these words that of course, many of Darling, Lord Darlington's ideas will seem today rather odd. Okay. So, gradually he is coming to terms as he looks back. So, remains of it of the days, you see. He remembers now, as he remembers that he has given the best years of his life to a person who was not really such a great man and he tries to defend himself. He says that um, if, if in practice, it is uh, simply not possible to adopt such a critical attitude towards an employer and at the same time provide good service. So, what has, uh, this is the way he is uh, um, consoling himself, uh, is indulging in lot of uh, self justification and self defense that um, it really does not matter what kind of employer you are serving as long as you are serving uh, the person very faithfully, his ideologies should not matter. What should matter is how you, how well you serve or how well you uh, deliver um, your services or uh, how professional you are. But the question that arises is that if everyone turns out to be like this, then what happens to the society and to the world? Because uh, some a little bit of questioning and some subversion is after all necessary if one needs to maintain any kind of equilibrium, otherwise the world would turn into a very lopsided place where uh, many would be ruled by very few. Okay, so, therefore, when we look at uh, the character of Stevens as an unreliable narrator, we now understand that how uh, he has been deceiving himself all these years, how he has been living uh, in some kind of, uh, of uh, naive faith in his employer, in spite of uh, being aware of the reality, but the trouble is that Stevens is not the kind of person who was willing to face reality. Now, as he is uh, uh, facing the remaining part of his life, he understands um, the follies that he has been making.
and um, as he leaves, you know, his uh, car uh, had run out of petrol and all that. So, uh, as he leaves uh, Mr. and Mrs. Taylor's inn, uh, um, he is accompanied uh, with a very fine gentleman, a doctor, Dr. Carlyle, and he says, um, you know, um, they start they start having a conversation. And then he points out, he says um, uh, that people have been, uh, uh, yeah, there is a very interesting part that had uh, a conversation that had taken place in, in that inn, when um, Harry Smith and Mr. and Mrs. Taylor are having a conversation with Stevens. Um, Stevens does not divulge that he is actually a butler from a distinguished household. He merely mentions that he comes from uh, Darlington Hall, and uh, and uh, very interestingly, he adds that uh, he has been a part of uh, several matters of international importance, and that uh, uh, shocks the company. I mean, they are totally overawed by the presence of such uh, such kind of a personage amidst them, and. Uh, everyone takes him for some kind of a diplomat or a baron or something very important. But um, Dr. Carlyle understands and as uh, they walk towards Stephen's car, uh, Carlyle asks him that are you a manservant or something like that and he, he says yes, I am and he feels extremely relieved. Why? Because he fe feels that uh, finally, there is no need for any kind of play acting. He feels that uh, it is good that somebody has uh, uh, managed to actually understand what he really is and he does not deny. So, that trip has act, uh, uh, does, uh, that trip the, um, does him plenty of good, because uh, he now feels that he does not have to pretend or suppress or conceal his real self from any anybody anymore. <coughs> we come to uh, the next chapter, Weymouth. And this is the place where uh, he, uh, he has an appointment with Miss, Miss Canton. Mm. And then they come face to face finally. So, uh, Ishiguro builds up the suspense till the end what is going to happen when these two eventually uh, come face to face after such a long period, nearly 20 years. Ah, Mr. Stevens, how nice to see you again. The light in the room was extremely gloomy on account of the rain, and so we moved two armchairs up close to the bay window. She had naturally aged somewhat, but to my eyes at least, she seemed to have done so very gracefully. Her figure remained slim, her posture as upright as ever. She had maintained too, her old way of holding her head in a manner that verged on the defiant. Of course, with the bleak light falling on her face, I could hardly help but notice the lines had appeared here and there. But, um, also observe that uh, how keenly he remembers uh, Miss Kenton, and you cannot remember someone that clearly, unless you have uh, deep feelings for or deep concern for that person. And he he actually remembers her very clearly, uh, the way she tilts her head and her posture and her mannerisms. Mannerisms, uh, all these things are firmly edged in his mind. As we continued to talk, I must say I thought I began to notice further more subtle changes which the years had wrought on her. For instance, Miss Canton appeared somewhat, uh, somehow slower. It is possible this was simply the calmness that comes with age, and I did try hard for some time to see it as such, but I could not escape the feeling that uh, what I was really seeing was a weariness with life. The spark which had once made her such a lively 
and at times volatile person seemed now to have gone. In fact, every now and then when she was not speaking, when her face was in repose, I thought I glimpsed something like sadness in her expression. So, uh, see rem the remains of the day is a novel about loss. Everybody loses someone precious. Miss Canton loses Stevens, who she had uh, deeply cared about. Uh, we can even uh, say that she was in love with Stevens, when he abruptly ends those evening sessions with her, th those meetings with her, then she was uh, deeply distraught. And therefore, she starts seeking solace in the company of other men, who she ends up marrying and uh, leaving Darlington Hall for good. And now, um, she, might, she might have married uh, on rebound, or just to get away from Stevens, because she knew that he would never confess, he would never accept that he, he too loved her. And she knew that he is not the kind of person, who is going to admit his feelings to her, or to anyone, um, about anything. But, and she had to go away, she could not, she could not, she, she is not the kind of person, who suppresses her feelings. And she could not bear to go on living in that house with uh, Stevens forever, uh, pretending as if, as if there is nothing between them. So, she decides to leave, but that has taken its toll on her. And now, she has lost that spark. Of course, uh, with age comes maturity and calmness, but he also feels that uh, uh, there is a sense of uh, world weariness in her. So, this is a, a novel about losses, okay. and what they used, what they had once, they realized that they will never have it again. We also remember that uh, uh, Mr. Stevens was banking on Miss Canton's return to Darlington Hall, because uh, she had written him a couple of letters, where she had hinted. Uh, uh, that she was not very happy, and she would like to return. So, um, now he asks, what? He asks her, indeed as you say, we are old friends. I simply wish to ask you, Mrs. Ben, but the fact is the letters I have had from you over the years, and in particular the last letter, have tended to suggest that you are um, rather unhappy. I simply wondered, if you were being ill treated in some way, uh, forgive me as I say, but it is something that has worried me for some time. I would fool, I would feel foolish, had I come all this way, and seen you, and not at least asked you. Mr. Stevens, there is no need to be embarrassed. Um, in fact, I am very touched, you should be so concerned, and I can put your mind at rest on this matter, absolutely. And then she tells him that uh, she is, uh, she may not be very happy in her marriage, but uh, no way is she going to leave her husband, because uh, um, all said and done, he is a fine man. He has treated her well, and uh, she is uh, uh, determined to continue that way. She also feels that uh, sometimes. Uh, due to sheer impulsiveness in her nature, she writes certain things, which she does not really mean, and that is what she says. But then, we, we can never be sure. Perhaps, she wants Stevens to uh, confess something, which never comes out. As we know, that in, with Stevens, uh, emotions are, uh, uh, he is the kind of man, who, who will always guard his emotions. I believe, I thought of it as simply another ruse, Mr. Stevens, to annoy, annoy you. It was a um, shock to come out here, and find myself married. For a long time, I was very unhappy, very unhappy indeed. But then, year after year went by, there was the war. Catherine grew up, and one day I realized, I loved my husband. You spend so much time with someone, you find, you get used to him. He is a kind, steady man, and yes, Mr. Stevens, I have grown to love him. But that, that does not mean to say, of course, there are not occasions now and then, extremely desolate occasions, when you think to yourself, what a terrible mistake I have made with my life. 
and you get to thinking about a different life, a better life you might have had. For instance, I get to thinking about a life I may have had with you, Mr. Stevens, and I suppose that is when I get angry over some trivial little thing and leave. But each time I do so, I realize before long, my rightful place is with my husband. After all, there is no turning back the clock now. You are very correct, Mrs. Ben, as you say, it is too late to turn back the clock. Indeed, I would not be able to rest, if I thought such ideas were the cause of unhappiness for you and your husband. So, both of them agree, to an extent, I mean, um, Miss, uh, Miss Canton or Mrs. Ben, she accepts what her life would have been with him, uh, had she not left and married. Perhaps, she has made a mistake, and she is honest enough to admit that to Mr. Stevens. Mr. Stevens, who has asked him himself this question several times, as we have just seen, he regrets the uh, ending, the abrupt ending of the coffee, uh, the cocoa sessions in the evening with Miss Kenton, and he regrets what uh, perhaps things would have been different, had he continued those meetings with her, those sessions with her, who knows where all that would have led to. But now, it is too late, as this accept that uh, they are old, and they do not have much time left anymore. And too much has happened, so there is no question of going back. And then, um, they take leave of each other in a very formal way. And thank you for the lift, it was very kind of you, it was so nice to see you again, she says. Okay. And then he says, it was a great pleasure to see you again, Mrs. Ben. And uh, in this way, they take uh, each other's leave. So, um, uh, as he is waiting now, as he is about to leave and uh, leave the countryside and um, go back to Darlington Hall, return to his duties, he meets another person uh, at the at the inn and they talk about various matters, illnesses, middle age and um, other things. And then, he the other man confesses, that he is uh, actually uh, an under butler, a footman of sorts, um, in a big establishment. And then, uh, Mr. Stevens acknowledges, that he also is a butler, with um, a very great establishment, Lord Darling, uh, Darlington Hall. Okay. Uh, uh, the fact is, of course, I said after a while, I gave my best to Lord Darlington. I gave him the very best I had to give. <coughs> and now, well, I find I do not have a great deal more left to give. So, finally, we find Stevens being honest with himself and with others. All his life, he had evaded certain issues, but this complete week, it had given him time and freedom um, and opportunities to look back. He had met se uh, several uh, people, he had met a completely different section of society, he has uh, listened to their points of view, and now he realizes that uh, perhaps he was wrong about several things. Uh, the world is a changed place, and he is a relic of sorts. And he confesses, he admits to himself, Lord Darlington was not a bad man, and here comes the confession. He was not a bad man at all, and at least he had the privilege of being able to see, uh, sorry, to say at the end of his life, that he made his own mistakes. His lordship was a courageous man. He chose a certain path in life, it proved to be a misguided one, but there he chose it. He can say that at least. As for myself, I cannot even claim that. You see, I trusted, I trusted in his lordship's wisdom. All those years I served him, I trusted I was doing something worthwhile. I can't even say I made my own mistakes. Really, one has to ask oneself, what dignity is there in that? So, finally, he comes to terms with his life. You see, there was no, really no dignity. He may, he, uh, I have been sort of fooling myself into believing, that I am being very professional, by serving Lord Darlington, 
faithfully, uh, but uh, Lord Darlington made his mistakes, but what was I doing there? So, uh, uh, the novel uh, although is set in England and everyone uh, is English in the novel, but it can also be read as a uh, very post colonial kind of a, uh, a work, where uh, how people are oppressed to such an extent that um, they are even unable to think for themselves, they are denied the right to think for themselves and even their thoughts are controlled by their masters and that is Stephen's tragedy as he looks back to his life. A life which he thought for a long time was a success, he was that he has, uh, he, there was a time when he had reached the uh, uh, epitome or the peak of his profession but now he realizes that it was all a big sham. Nobody ever bothered about him except and the people who actually cared about him, his father and Miss Kenton, um, he never paid them any attention, the, the kind of attention that they deserved. And both left him, one, one died uh, utterly neglected and Miss Canton had no other choice but to leave and get married to someone else and lead a life of loveless marriage. So, so many lives ruined, all because his uh, misguided or misplaced sense of loyalty in Lord Darlington, who was not even worth it. At one point um, during the course of the novel, we are told by uh, one of uh, Lord Darlington's uh, friend's son, uh, who has been uh, you know um, uh, a participant in the activities, um, the international affairs. And he says that uh, you see uh, Lord Darlington is playing indeed a very important role in uh, uh, facilitating uh, anti-Semitic feelings in uh, England and this should not be allowed. And uh, like it or not, uh, directly or indirectly, he has become a major uh, supporter of uh, Hitler in England and that is something everyone should be careful about. But at no point uh, does uh, Stevens accept that, but it is only towards the end of his life, he believes, uh, he, he realizes that Lord Darlington was not a great man and he has wasted rather, uh, just you know, thrown away his life away for someone who was not really all that great. So, <coughs> the novel ends on a very sombre note and uh, on a note of nostalgia. It occurs to me furthermore that bantering is hardly an unreasonable duty for an employer to expect a professional to perform. I have of course, already devoted much time to developing my bantering skills, but it is possible I have never previously approached the task with the commitment I might have done. Perhaps then, when I return to Darlington Hall tomorrow, Mr. Faraday will not himself be back for a further week. I will begin practicing with renewed effort. I should hope then, that by the end of my employer's return, I shall be in a position to pleasantly surprise him. And that is how the novel ends. Uh, the, the feeling that uh, the desire to please uh, one's master remains, but he also uh, uh, realizes that uh, he has to unlearn a lot, what he has been doing and what the kind of person he was during um, Lord Darlington's time, he, uh, uh, that would not work anymore, he has to change and uh, perhaps it is for his own good that he has accepted that there is a uh, need for him to change in the remains of his days. So, that is the, that is how we end the novel and I uh, will be giving you some questions and quizzes on the novel very soon. Okay. Thank you very much.